developer and food photographer. Hi, I'm Selena Lee, and I'm also a recipe developer and menu developer for local restaurants and businesses. And together, we wrote a book called Korean Instant Pot Cookbook. Okay, so when did you become interested in cooking? Um, I really started getting interested in cooking when I moved out of the house and went to college and I had to cook for myself. So I watched a lot of PBS shows back then and it was Julia and Jacques and um, Lydia's Italy and mm -hmm. Simply Ming and Ming Tsai was uh, one of the very, very few Asian chefs out there that was on TV way back then. Mm -hmm. um, and then many years later, I started working part-time for an independent magazine called Anthology. And that's where my food interest just really started to climb. Um, and through that, I met Selena through a mutual friend. And I attended her panchan workshop that she was um, giving out, or she was doing these Korean cooking classes in the San Francisco Bay Area. And the only class that I could find where someone was teaching, you know, Korean food cooking classes, and um, it was great. And so after that, I was um, pitched to do a Korean Instant Pot cookbook, and the first person I thought of that I wanted to do this with was Selena. And the funny thing was, was I knew it would be a little bit difficult because I knew Selena didn't cook with an Instant Pot or didn't That's even right. own yeah. an Instant Pot. <laughs> but, um, but we started cooking with it in the beginning of the pandemic and realized how savvy it was and how helpful it was in the kitchen while we were cooking so much at home during that time. And then by the end of the year, we started making recipes for the mm -hmm. book. Um, for me, my interest in cooking started when I had my kids. Um, actually, to be perfectly honest, I was not into cooking at all. And, and basically, someone had to cook and put food on the table every night. And so, um, yeah, I had no choice. But I really wanted to figure out a way to like it. And I was thinking that perhaps if I uh, learn how to cook together with some of my friends that I would get into it. And so that's where the Panchan workshop came about. And it became uh, a passion project for me. And um, I liked it so much that I decided to quit my job <laughs> and change a career. And so, uh, I, you know, like Nancy said, we met at, through a mutual friend at my workshop. and. You know, when Nancy first approached me about the book, I was, in fact, a little hesitant because at that time I was learning how to cook using the very traditional method of Korean cooking, and I was not quite open to using a tool or appliance. So, but you know, it didn't take very long for me to get convinced, <laughs> and um, it, it was an amazing journey and a great project to work with. Instant Pot works really well with Korean food in general. I was really surprised to see how many dishes we were able to produce using the Instant Pot. And it does a really good job of tenderizing tough cut of meat. So dishes like haibichim, where it takes a long time to um, braise on stove top, it does a really good job in a less time. As well as things like sagor gongtang, which is the bone broth, uh, usually takes hours to boil in order to get that white milkiness. So it does a good job of doing that as well. And having the saute function does make it really versatile. So you don't have to switch between pots and pans. And that means it reduces a lot of dishes, which is a big win for me. So there are a lot of surprises for me. Um, while cooking in the Instant Pot. But for me, and I think it's because I love this ingredient so much, it's, um, it's cooking eggs. <laughs> it's so simple, but um, I just love how 
easy it is to make hard-boiled eggs like Maya Kedan. It's so simple to make the perfect hard-boiled egg in the Instant Pot the way you want it. And um, even in Kamja salad, you add the uncooked potatoes and the eggs, uncooked eggs, all in the pot and you cook it together and it comes out perfectly and it saves on dishes and more work. But um, the game changer for me was Keranjing because my family loves it so much and we inhale it. And I know I can have that going in the Instant Pot while I cook a soup or stew on the stove and when the timer goes off, it'll be done and it's always consistently done and it's silky and it's tasty and it's so delicious. Um, the other thing that was great was making chuk because it's you just put it in the pot and you don't have to babysit it. You don't have to worry about adding more liquid or not and stirring. So that was really great. And I have to mention that a lot of people love making chapcha in the Instant Pot. And I was surprised too when um, writing that recipe and testing it out because you put the uncooked noodles in with the ingredients in the Instant Pot, cook it for three minutes, and then it's done. So um, yeah, th those were the great surprises. Okay, so the difference between slow cookers and Instant Pots. So um, slow cookers is an appliance that does basically one thing and it slow cooks on low heat for a long time. And this is a great benefit for people who want to um, cook something ahead of time and have their food done hours later. And it still s seals in the flavor and um, it makes amazing dishes. Uh, the Instapot is a multifunctional um, appliance that does, you know, several things like sauteing and um, steaming. But the main attraction is that it pressure cooks. And um, when the pressure cooker is sealed, it um, builds pressure and brings up the temperature to a really high, it's higher than boiling point. So that means that you can generally um, cook and braise food at a faster amount of time. One of the dishes that didn't make the cut was agujin, which is a monkfish, spice, this spicy monkfish dish. And there's a funny story. My husband was taste testing that dish and he was sort of picking through the dish and said, this tastes really good, but he's like, where's the fish? <laughs> so basically the fish, the, the monkfish is really um, tender and soft. So it basically disintegrated into the sauce. And so all it was just the bone and the sauce and the veggies. <laughs> um, so that one didn't make the cut. Um, and one of, one of the uh, more, I guess, ones that we had challenge um, was, I would say, kongguksu, which is a soybean broth with noodles. It's a cold noodle dish for summer. And that one, it, it turned out fine. It's just that we weren't getting like that really nice white pale color in the broth. And later on, we realized that because of the high pressure and not able to soak long enough, um, that the beans soak long enough, um, made the broth a little bit yellow um, and I would say the easiest and uh, once perfect was dakguk and that one the process is really easy but the flavors are all there and so I think it's a really good way to make dakguk um, and perhaps you can try making it for this coming Lunar New Year Personal favorites um, from each category. Wow, okay. This is a tough one um, since I have so many favorites. But um, all right, so Kongjaban is my favorite panchan dish for the Instant Pot because you don't have to soak the beans. And I never made it before the Instant Pot, and now I love making it in there because it's so fast and easy. Um, Chongbokjuk is, uh, I love chuk. It's 
I say that if food was a hug, it would be chuk. And my mom and dad love chompok chuk, and so does my son and my husband. So it's nice to make for everybody. Um, Yukkejang is another favorite. It's hearty and um, perfect soup stew. Um, posam because I think that posam really encapsulates the spirit of um, sharing food together at a table. Takkarguksu uh, is another one because I just throw in the noodles after the chicken is cooked and the broth is cooked and that's fast and easy and done. Um, Meontang is a classic dish. And I guess the last one will be the sauna eggs. Uh, I mentioned I liked eggs, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a great snack. It's so fun and easy to make in the Instant Pot. I have to say some dis dishes are just not meant to be made in the Instant Pot. And um, I guess, you know, traditional routes will always work. So I think my deciding point will be if I'm preparing a, a family meal or something and I need to have multiple things cooking at the same time, it's always good to have the main dish going in the Instant Pot while you're cooking the other dishes on the side. And it may not work well for, you know, um, grilled meat that requires charring or any kind of um, uh, you know barbecue kind of flavor but um, it, it actually did a pretty good job cooking the bulgogi and spicy pork so I would definitely give it a try I'm always looking for ways to use less refined sugar in my cooking and so a lot of those recipes out there suggest using things like honey or oligodang or some type of um, sweet rice syrup and I thought about making purbogi uh, using the maple syrup because I thought the flavor would match and that it wouldn't have that distinctive honey flavor and so and I was really happy with the results and I bet you wouldn't be able to tell if maple syrup was used instead of sugar in that one. I was really lucky um, to work with Selena on this book because she has such an excellent eye and I think we both have a modern aesthetic so we wanted to stay true to our styles. Um, and. Personally, I mean, especially me growing up here, I think when I thought about Korean food and Korean culture, it's just the style just seemed really old school to me. And, um, but we really wanted to stay true to how our styles are now. And all of the dishes and utensils um, are from our homes. And we even raided Selena's sister's house for her stuff. And we photographed everything in my home. And so it really was Korean home cooking. <laughs> we ate very well during photo shoot days. Today I'm making kalbitang in the Instant Pot. It's a beef short rib soup. I think of this soup as a luxurious version of sogi mukuk, another beef soup with radish. Short ribs are a deluxe cut of meat, so we eat this on special occasions like weddings. Before 70s and 80s, Chanchiguksu was a common entree served at weddings to symbolize longevity and happiness. As trends change, kalbitang became a popular dish served at weddings.
Soaking the meat or parboiling is a common practice in Korean cooking to remove blood and unwanted odor from the meat. Roots and stems of the scallions are used as an aromatic for the stock. Green parts are used as a garnish. For instant pot cooking, cut vegetables slightly thicker than normal to avoid breaking down. Shaving the corners in big chunks are also very helpful. For me, kalbi tang is all about having a clear yet deep broth and super tender meat. In order to get more clear broth, our mothers often left the pot out in cool temperature overnight in order to lift all the fat that settles on the surface the next morning. Rinsing the short rib will remove any remaining sediments by the bone, which will result in cleaner broth. One of the benefits of using the Instant Pot is when it's cooking, you do not need to babysit it. You can walk away and do other things. Egg chidan is a common egg garnish that is often used in traditional Korean dishes. Kalbitang, chanchiguksu, and tteokbok to name a few. They are all dishes that are eaten on special occasions.
Use small amount of oil and using the paper towel, thinly coat the surface of the pan. Use two eggs at a time and watch the heat level by lowering and turning off the heat until egg sets on one side before flipping over. Allow the egg to cool, then cut it into thin strips. Transfer the short ribs and tangmian into a separate bowl. Season the broth with salt and pepper to taste. Garnish the soup with egg chidan and sliced scallions. We hope you enjoy the video and happy Korean instant pot cooking! Um, I learned that I love collaborations. So writing this book together with um, Selena was really fun and a great experience. I got to learn from her and um, we got to bounce ideas off each other. I usually work alone, uh, so it was great to just be with someone. Um, and when my mom saw the book, she said, Wow, our Songmi did this. <laughs> now you can make all the food, which made me happy but also sad because um, I love my mom's cooking and I want her mm -hmm. to cook for me forever. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, what did I learn? Um, you know, I learned that writing a book is a pretty lonely and hard process and you sort of have to keep up with the energy and pace yourself because usually cookbooks can take more than one to two years to produce and I was really lucky and I felt so uh, much better knowing that Nancy was part of this book um, because she has experience publishing a cookbook before. And um, how did my mom react to this? It always makes me a little bit nervous getting their generation's <laughs> feedback. Um, but she was thrilled, and she was basically she was actually one of the first people that pre-ordered a bunch of our books. 
to give it to her friends and later on she told me that she um, her, their friends really liked gifting to their children because they always ask for their recipe and measurements and things like that and, um, so it's been really fun to see them spreading the love Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you find new and different ways of cooking Korean food with the Instapot.